What's up everybody, Billy here, and today I'm going to be going over the top 5 features of the newly announced iPhone SE from the Apple event on March 21st of 2016. Now if you don't know what the iPhone SE is, it's a new, and I say new in quotations because it's it looks identical to the iPhone 5 and 5S in terms of form factor, it's another 4 inch iPhone, but looks can be deceiving, and no this isn't an iPhone SE, it doesn't have the badge on it, but we're going to get to that a little bit later. But first off, let's get right into it with number one, the dimensions of the phone. The iPhone SE is 4.8 inches tall, 2.3 inches wide, and 0.3 inches thick, which if you look up the specs on the iPhone 5S is identical, but the only difference is the 0.05 ounce or one gram difference. So if you want to tell the difference between the 5, the 5, the 5S, and the SE, you're going to have to check for that special little SE badge on the back or lack thereof, or see if the phone is the newly announced rose gold color. Now, if we're gonna be going the Apple naming convention of things, you can almost think about this as the S version of the 5S. Now, next we move on to number two, where the biggest differences are now seen, and that's in the processor. Despite the iPhone SE looking and feeling like an iPhone 5 or 5S, we've all been taught that we should never judge a book by its cover, and that's true in this case as well. The iPhone SE is rocking the same A9 chip and the embedded M9 motion coprocessor as the iPhone 6S and 6S. Plus. So you're essentially packing in most of the internals from the current gen iPhones and stuffing them into a 4 inch body which I'm sure many of you don't mind including myself as I'm still rocking a 5S myself well of course along with the Nexus 6 P2. And next we move on to number 3 and as a YouTuber this is probably the most exciting one for me which is the camera. The iPhone SE is using the same 12 megapixel rear facing camera that has an aperture in f2.2 as the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus and this is huge unlike the 4 inch screen. You're able to actually shoot in 4K video files, but as I mentioned in a previous video, if you're going to be doing that, make sure you get the 64 gig version at least, since the 16 gigabyte version will be running out of space very, very quickly with those 4K files. Now the only really snub here is the front facing camera. Unfortunately, it's not using the 6S one, but rather the old 5S one, which isn't terrible by any standards, but I'm sure that this is where some of the cost cutting measures had to be done, or it could just be that they couldn't really fit it in there but for whatever reason it may be, this is where it's identical to the 5S. And now we're moving on to number four, which is the battery. Now Apple usually doesn't like to divulge like the exact milliampere of the phone itself. So we're gonna have to actually wait till someone gets their hands on it and cracks it open and see what it is. But Apple is claiming that it'll actually have an equal to or better battery life than the 6S, but not necessarily the 6S Plus. That's because the 6S Plus is a lot larger and houses a very large battery. Now this is most likely due to the screen size and resolution since it won't have to pump out as many pixels, therefore saving on battery, despite the possibly smaller battery than the 6S. In my opinion, this is probably one of the biggest draws of the phone besides the four inch form factor. And now we go on to fact number five, which is pricing and availability. So perhaps I've piqued your interest and now you're really, really interested in the iPhone SE, or you're just kind of like me where you have an iPhone 5 or a 5S and you really like that four inch form factor and you kind of wanted to keep it that way. So here's what you're gonna need to know. You can pre-order from Apple starting on March 24th and it will be available starting on March 31st of 2016. Now these are all in American prices, so be sure to check out the Apple site for your respective country. And I can already tell you that they are definitely more expensive in Canada, but I still love my Looney though. Now the 16 gigabyte model is gonna be running you $399.99 and the 64 gig model is gonna be running you at $499.99, which in my opinion, for a modern smartphone, that's, that's pretty good. At first, it's going to be available in Australia, Canada, China, France, Germany, Hong Kong, Japan, New Zealand, Puerto Rico, Singapore, the UK, and the US first, but it should be in more countries by the end of May, according to the keynote. And there you have it, folks. That is the top five facts of the newly and going to be released iPhone SE. Personally, I like to kind of think of it as a wolf in sheep's clothing because it's gonna be looking like the 5 or the 5S, you know, just kind of, you know, that older two years back kind of look with the four inch screen, but it's gonna be housing some of the internals and that DNA from the 6S. And to be quite honest, I've been really happy with my 5S. It's been really sticking with me these past couple of years and it's been working really, really well. So even personally, if I upgrade to something that's the same form factor, which honestly, I don't mind the bigger screens. I mean, I do use a Nexus 6P as a second phone, but there's something about this four inch form factor that I still like to use with the one hand operation. So for myself and many others out there, this is gonna be a great addition to the iPhone line. Up. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to press that thumbs up button. And if you would like to see more content just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have an awesome day and peace out.